All right, let's take a look at a, a quick review of chapter of unit four. We've got uh, triangles. We're all about proving triangles congruent in this chapter. A couple things: make sure you got to know uh, scaling triangles. If we look at the size of their triangles, remember this is no side the same. We did a lot with isosceles that has you know two sides the same. That's an awesome picture, and that means the base angles are the same. And then we did equilateral; all sides are the same, which means all angles are the same. So scaling would be no sides the same. Uh, also, acute, all the angles are acute, less than 90. You have one that's bigger than 90, something like this. And then right angle, of course, like this. So you can be a right isosceles triangle, something along those lines. Uh, we classify them by their sides and by their angles. Awesome. What else did we do? Oh, that looks kind of crazy. Let me fix that. Okay. Uh, what we can do here is... If we're isosceles, you know, these angles are congruent. These sides are congruent. So we can set them equal to each other. x squared plus 6x equals 27. And then now it's just a matter of solving this equation here. So when we have a uh, quadratic, when we have it to a power of 2, we set it equal to 0. So we subtract it from both sides. So now we're really looking at x squared plus 6x minus 27 equals 0. And now this should factor. Break this bad boy down into what multiplies to give me negative 27 and uh, adds to give me 6. Well, it should be, what, 9 and 3. And who's got to be the negative because it's positive times a negative. should be 3's got to be the negative because 9 times negative 3 is negative 27 and we get 6. So this is really x minus 3, x plus 9, and that equals 0. Then make each parentheses equal to 0. So x can either be 3 and your other answer is negative 9. So I'm equal to 0. Uh, excellent. So it has two answers. Very nice. So start off with types of triangles. Then we said we had to be real careful. We're going to prove them congruent. So if they're congruent, it means every side's the same, every angle is the same. They're corresponding parts. So when you name these things, like if I just happen to say O R S Q, I have to come over here and name it exactly the same way so it matches up. So R's got two of these. Who's got two? D. So R is to D. Then what do I go to? S has got three, so it went to C. Ooh, that looks bad. Let me see if I can slide that over. There we go. And then what happened? I went to uh, Q, which is the one, so that gives me the E here. So those match up. Is that the only way to name it? No, you can name it uh, starting with any different one. That's one way to do it. If you wanted to start with Q, S, R, you can. Just make sure that we know that uh, who matches who. Like Q and E are the same. S and C are the same. R and D are the same. So you got to be careful. Q is the same thing as E. S is the same thing as C, uh, and R is the same thing as D. So you can name it a bunch of different ways as long as you're matching up corresponding parts. Just like we can say SR is congruent to what? Well, that's a rough looking congruent sign. Here's SR is congruent to segment CD. Awesome. And same thing, you can just individually pick an angle. Angle S is congruent to what? Angle C. So those are corresponding parts. Proving triangles are congruent. That's our whole goal. So instead of showing every side equals every side and every angle equals every angle, we came up with these shortcuts. So which one's worked? Yeah, this one works here. This is side, side, side. You don't need to prove that all the angles are. If the sides are, it's got to be congruent. Same thing here. What do we got? This is side, angle, side. So if you got the side, the angle in between them, then definitely that works. Here we've got angle, angle, side. This is one that works. And the last one that works, you know, you may have to mark it a little bit because we got vertical angles here, but we're looking at angle side angle. So these are all my shortcuts. This is what came up in our proofs. Instead of proving all three sides, all three angles, if you can just get this combination, proof, done and done, saves you a lot of time. Who doesn't work? Well, let's take a look at this. Uh, things that don't work would be something like, let's look over here. This one. This is what? Angle, angle, angle. Why doesn't that work? Well, remember, it can't work. Oh, that's one thing. Because it just means they're similar. It means they're the same shape, but they could be a different size. One of these could be huge or smaller. We don't know. They're, they don't work here. What's the other one that doesn't work? This one, I think, is the easy one to remember. We've got angle, side, side. And this is one we don't cuss in class. So definitely, it doesn't work. Um, so angle, side, side. And the reason is this one can come up. This angle is not fixed. It actually could have come back this way slightly, you know, and still been the same length, but just meeting over here. I don't know which triangle it is. Too hard to tell. Not guaranteed. They may be congruent. doesn't guarantee it. Except here is the weird exception to the rule. you got to love math. There's always an exception to the rule. When it's a right angle, then it's all of a sudden cool. We can say hypotenuse leg. If you know the hypotenuse, across from the right angle is the hypotenuse, and one of the legs, or both legs, and you know one of the legs 
and you have a right angle, then you can actually use this. So it's the only time angle side side works is when it's a right angle. You can actually say hypotenuse legs. So we won't even say angle side side. No, no, no. Uh, hypotenuse legs, then it works. So why do we do all that? These became reasons to prove things congruent. So bear with me here on my handwriting. Always mark the picture. So we've got triangle ABC is isosceles with base AC. So what does that tell me? Well, it tells me for sure if it's isosceles, these are congruent. If they're congruent, these are actually congruent down here too because the base angles are congruent. Then we know DB is the angle bisector of ABC. So we know that this angle up here is congruent to this angle. And then we know this is definitely uh, congruent to itself. So a lot of different options here. You could actually go side, angle, side. You could do angle, side, angle, uh, either one of those. I'm going to go with side, angle, side. So I plan out my proof here. You can do it the other way if you like. I'm not going to rewrite all this, but obviously it goes here. We just state that given, get it all thrown out there uh, so we have it. Now, if I'm using side, angle, side, I need to go through and prove this side, this angle, this side. So I'm going to start with the easy one. I'm going to say BD is congruent to BD. Fantastic. Of course, everything is Excel. Why is that? It's the reflexive property. So you're, everything is congruent to itself. So it's in both triangles, reflexive property. So I've got my side. Let's get this angle then. So I'm going to use uh, DB is the angle bisector. That's why I marked it already. So just make sure you name the angle correctly. I'm looking at ABD is congruent to what? It is congruent to CBD. And the reason that works out, it is the definition of what? Angle bisector. So because the definition of angle bisector, it means it cuts them in half. That's what bisect means, cuts them in half. So that's my step number three. Come on down here for step four. I'm just, I need the last one. AB is congruent to what? BC. And the reason that is, is definition of what? Isosceles. It's an isosceles triangle. So two sides must be congruent. That's what isosceles mean. So definition of isosceles triangle. Once I have that, I'm ready to wrap it up. ABD is congruent to CBD. Why is that? What did I prove? I proved side, angle, side. Just to make sure I got it all, I always go back and say, you know, did I do side, angle, side? Sure, here's and number two is my side. Here's my angle. Here's my side. So I've got side, angle, side. So I proved it. I'm good to go. Excellent. One more of these just to give you a little extra practice. We kind of add on beyond just proving two triangles congruent, we can say corresponding parts of congruent, congruent triangles are congruent. Wow, it's a mouthful. So it's the same thing. Prove the triangles are congruent. Then I'm going to prove that VW is ZX is ZX. They're the same by saying these two triangles are the same. So my first goal is to say the top triangle is congruent to the bottom triangle. So what do we got here? VX bisects, VX bisects ZW. Why does it do it? VX is bisecting ZW. So ZW is getting cut in half. Uh, then I know I've always got these vertical angles here. Vertical angles are congruent. And then I gave you V is congruent to X. Fantastic. So looking at this, what do I have? I've got angle, angle, side. So that's why these two triangles are congruent. So I'm going to prove the two triangles are congruent. Then I'm going to say parts of them are congruent. So number one, I'm not going to write it, but it goes right here. There's the given. Number two, let's get our angle, angle, side on. So uh, one's already taken care of in the given. There it is. It's, it's already done for. What's my other angle? Well, we've got angle VUW is congruent to what? ZUW. X. So I've got this is congruent to this. Why are those two angles congruent? Ch -ch -ch. They're congruent because what? Vertical angles are congruent. And I'm going to abbreviate here. And that's cool. Vertical angles are congruent. So the given gives me my angle. That gives me my other angle. I just need that last side. So I'm going to say what? ZU is congruent to UW. Why are they congruent? Well, it's bisect. So it's the definition of bisect. Bisect means cut in half. Definition of bisect. Fantastic. And then I've got this, so now I can say my two triangles. And be careful how you name them. I'm going to say V, U, W. They have to correspond here. So V matches who? Matches X. U matches U. And Z matches W. So I've got the right order here. Why do I have that? That's angle, angle, side. Awesome. I proved them congruent. Now I can say if the two triangles are congruent, pick up this piece of it. And I can say, yes, these are congruent. Why? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Definitely use a shortcut on that one. That's a mouthful. Uh, I always double check it. Did I really prove it in the given I showed? There, this was given. This is my angle here. 
then I prove the other angle, then I prove the side, angle, angle, side, then I prove the triangle is congruent, then I can use corresponding parts because I added this. This must be the same length as this because the two triangles, they correspond with each other. That's the chapter in a nutshell. Good luck on the test. I hope it goes well. Peace out.